Hello. Today we're going to look at uh, the history of the guitar. Um, the guitar is an instrument that a lot of people play nowadays and it's also the sort of instrument that you might find that you've got one hidden away in the house somewhere. I'm going to be skipping over quite a lot of the nuts and bolts of the information here and this certainly isn't a full history of the guitar but it is hopefully something that you can find interesting and something that um, will give you a rough timeline of how things came about and why we get the guitars that we have today. The modern acoustic guitar as we know it today can be traced back really to the, about the 13th century with an instrument called the guitar. Now I haven't got one of those and the nearest thing I can find to show you guys is this which is a mandolin. Now a guitar doesn't look anything like this really but it has got the double course strings which means for each note there are two sets of strings just there. Um, and a mandolin will sound something like this. Which again, if you had a proper 13th century guitar, it wouldn't sound exactly the same. But it's the nearest that I can get to in the studio today. After the guitar, the next guitar that we're going to look at is the classical guitar. Now you'll see immediately that this looks a lot more like a normal modern guitar because, well, it is. Um, this one particularly is a modern acoustic guitar, but um, classical guitars in general, um, certainly when they first started to evolve into what we now see and we now use, they would have been a bit smaller than this. This is, as I say, a modern, a modern one, so it's slightly bigger. There would have been maybe a smaller body shape maybe around kind of this sort of size. They'd look a bit longer and thinner than the guitars of today. But we are now onto six strings and one note for each string. Or one string for each note. Um, they would originally have been made of gut strings. Uh, or these strings would have been made of gut. Nowadays they're made of nylon, or at least the top three are. So they are sometimes referred to as nylon guitars. If I play it in the kind of traditional way that you might hear it. Get something like that, it's quite a soft, mellow tone. These guitars kind of stayed like this for quite a while. Um, they did, obviously, as I say, I'm skipping out a lot of the, um, the little points in the history of the guitar. But at some stage they did become steel strung as well, um, as the modern guitar began to take a bit more shape. However, the next biggest change that we're going to look at comes in the early part of the 20th century, and a guy called C.F. Martin, and he and his guitar company invented a thing called the Dreadnought guitar. Now that, as soon as I pick one up, you will notice that as the general, the modern guitar. Um, the Dreadnought guitar came about because although they changed to steel strings in the early part of the 20th century, things were getting louder anyway and the guitar player wanted to be heard and the smaller body meant that they couldn't really be heard if they were playing with a, a group of people. So a lot of the famous players of the time spoke to C.F. Martin and asked him to make a larger bodied guitar and so he did. And he came up with the Dreadnought which is named after a British battleship which was one of the biggest ships at the time. So they came up with the Dreadnought because it had a massive body shape. And as you can see, you probably recognise this as the kind of modern guitar shape. If you ignore this bit just for one second, um, the Dreadnought shape is much bigger than the classical guitar that I've just been playing, and it was certainly much bigger than the smaller guitars that would have been around when Martin invented it. Um, this one is by a different manufacturer and it has a thing called a cutaway on it, uh, which is a bit more of a modern um, interpretation and it just allows the player to get to these bottom frets here. Um, it's immediately louder and it's immediately bigger and immediately you start to see this as the modern guitar. I should 
point out that if you want him to learn the guitar, um, something like the classical guitar, or the nine watt string guitar, is a great place to start. This one is a full size one, but you can also get half size and you can get three quarter size guitars. They're also the sort of things that you might have find these lying around the house anyway. Quite often people will have collected at some point in their life a, uh, a nylon guitar of some description. They're great for learning on. In fact, I learned on a three quarter size nylon guitar when I first started playing guitar. So if you haven't got one, you can find them reasonably cheap as well. Um, even try charity shops, they'll quite often have something at least to start you off with uh, if you haven't got one yourself. And they are great though, because they're the, the nylon strings, they're, um, they're a bit easier on your fingers when you're first starting to learn rather than the, the steel strings. And certainly a half size or a three quarter size one is a lot easier to start to learn with if you're um, just getting used to where to put your fingers on the fretboard. So that's the acoustic guitar, but I should talk about the electric guitar as well. And I'm going to show you two guitars. Um, the first one is possibly the most famous one, and that is the Fender Stratocaster. This was developed by a guy called Leo Fender. Uh, and again, the early part of the, uh, or mid-ish um, part of the 20th century, when music began to get electrified. And what they use is these pickups here, which are these. There's three of them down there. Um, they pick up the vibrations of the strings turn those into electrical energy and then it goes into the amplifier. This guitar at the moment has no strings on it, it's just due a restring and I've taken the strings off. But you can see the pickups quite nicely because there's no strings on it. So this is the Fender Stratocaster, very famous and well copied guitar. Um, and is um, used a lot, it's kind of considered one of the guitars that kind of made rock music or certainly rock and roll music. Um, so that's this one. And the other one, which has strings on, so I'm just going to play a little bit, um, is this, which is the Gibson Les Paul guitar. Now, this was developed by a guy called Les Paul in uh, the late 40s, early 50s. And um, this, along with the Stratocaster, are probably the two most famous electric guitars that you'll find. They're certainly one of the most, two of the most widely used that you'll hear anyway. Mm. Um, and obviously with the sound, a lot louder. show you this one last because this is made by a company called Gibson. Gibson was started by a chap called Orville Gibson and he was in the 18th um, in the 1800s he started his his luthiers shop but he didn't make anything like this. He was famous for making mandolins. So I thought it was a, in a weird way a bit of a, a full circle kind of thing from the guitar to the electric guitar and back again. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed a very potted history of the uh, acoustic and electric guitars, and uh, I will see you guys next time.